Greetings, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I am a permaculture designer. By the way, Pavlo is my teacher or tutor, rather. In 2016 and 2017, he uh, taught me about uh, permaculture. So now I'm going to present to you our project from uh, the garbage uh, hill to urban forest garden. Our center is an educational uh, and research center. What we do is we test all uh, permaculture methods to uh, restore fertility of soil. During the past several years, we have been mostly uh, focusing on some of these methods. We don't have our own soil. We, we have only some uh, residues of construction um, leftovers, and we use those. Please, next slide. Ta please take a look at the left-hand side picture. Uh, our center is located uh, in the middle of this uh, forest belt. You can see in the center of this uh, forest, uh, former construction site. On the right-hand side, you can see, a, you can take a closer look at this uh, plot of land where we were trying to cultivate some um, plants uh, and we failed. This is our project where we studied all the uh, sources of energy, wind energy, solar energy, soil energy, and this is a, a plan we developed for our future steps. Uh, next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah. Uh, so we started sorting uh, different types of garbage, uh, glass, paper, um, cardboard, whatever was uh, recyclable, we, we kept it. As the rest, we... Uh, 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 got rid of. Zero waste is the concept we were building our work on. You can take a look at the right hand side picture. You would see this red, bright red barrel. It's from uh, oil. We used it for, uh, we use it as a container for plants. And yeah, everything we could, we used for uh, the project. We found uh, metal, scrap metal uh, elements. We were trying to be creative to think of new uh, purposes of these metal elements. For example, this decorative gate to our garden on the left-hand side. We also performed some educational activities about uh, uh, processing waste with the help of worms. Uh, here on the right-hand side picture, you can see soil uh, full of worms, uh, which helps uh, process the waste. Uh, we often get help from our fellow uh, city dwellers, including uh, children and teenagers. You can also see our hands. Uh, we uh, at some point established this uh, chicken tractor as a mini project on, in our farm. Uh, once we had a visitor's uh, a child who asked her mother, uh, wow, 
do chicken produce eggs or uh, are they somehow produced at supermarkets? So children can be very uh, curious about this new type of knowledge about where the food comes from, about the origins of foods. We uh, use insects to restore diversity, biodiversity. On, on the left, you can see uh, the uh, house for insects and on the, on the right, you can see a house for wild bees. If you click on this uh, right hand side picture, you will see a short video. No, to at the bottom. No, somehow I cannot find it. Just click on it. No, it's not working. Okay, whatever. So we we kind of established this hotel, uh, wild bees hotel. It's made of uh, an old old um, broken uh, cask, and this is where we created this little hotel for wild bees. Next slide. Yeah. Uh, we were trying to increase the moisture of soil. For that purpose, we created many um, ones. Uh, we built their, we built them all out of glass bottles, uh, especially wine bottles often have these uh, like caves at the bottom, uh, which we used for collection of, uh, for, for, for uh, various insects where they could establish their temporary houses. These are plants which um, plants uh, the water in these mini ponds, we don't uh, change water there. These plants do this job for us. Uh, it's a pity we cannot play videos. So I really uh, am sorry about this. Uh, no, I don't see a button on the left. Let me try that. Or, or anyway, let's move on. We inherited this huge uh, warehouse. It, it's 25 meters long and five meters wide. Uh, we uh, have very dry um spring summer and autumn uh, we only have a lot of precipitation in winter mostly in winter and sometimes in uh, autumn so we decided to organize these um watersheds and uh, these you can see these uh, small tanks on these pictures uh, to collect um, natural water precipitation we also established a system of uh, pipes to uh, have this drip irrigation. Our plants were especially happy about this, uh, uh, mostly the conifers. Uh, pine trees uh, are especially thirsty during dry seasons. Uh, urban forest garden. It's really, really uh, uh, bad that the video doesn't play. We established these raised beds. We didn't have good soil, so we had to uh, work hard to establish uh, good ground for our plants. So you can see that we have like flowers the flower shape and then in each uh, petal we have different companion uh, crops some medicinal herbs and even even uh, 
mushrooms. So, of course, when we harvest our crops, we have like a little celebration, a party for it. We invite the locals to join us, maybe those visiting our, our community. So now we see all kinds of landfills, not as something negative, but rather as, as a say as a foundation for some other innovations. So let it be a permaculture. So as, as you know, Ukraine is going through some turbulence. We have the war. Um, being waged against us and and we are as part of our humanitarian effort we are doing what we call garden therapy and I don't like the term um, IDPs or refugees these people are our guests and so when they go back home they will have some work to do they will need to build back their communities. And so we are trying to share with them uh, the knowledge that we have that could be useful. So my formula of permaculture is know your plot, feel it with your heart, use your head, use your hands. And as a result, you will have a functional uh, harmonious garden and I am I am sincerely grateful to everyone helping me with this initiative initiative and of course to Pavlo who shared so much knowledge with me so generously and we have applied this knowledge best we could thank you so much Lilia for the great presentation. Well, I say we go ahead with, with the, uh, the remaining two and then we take the questions. So Katerina, are you ready to present? Sure. Are you going to change your, your own slides or would you like me to help you? Sure, if you could help. Um, or let me try. Hold on. I could share my screen for you. Yes, it would be great. Thank you. Because I, uh, it's a new computer. I'm not yet sure how to use it. Greetings, everyone. My name is Katarina Demiduk. I am the chair of a zero waste NGO. This is what we're called, zero waste. We're based in Lutsk. And we implement eco initiatives. So today I would like to tell you about how I uh, did some planting this year actually twice this year, two types of it. This was my first time experience. First, I had this garden on my balcony. I tried growing stuff right there on my balcony and in my apartment. And then I uh, took it out to a city garden that we opened at the end of summer. And I'm going to tell you a bit more about how we did that. Next slide, please. So this is how it started and then at the end of March, closer to the 1st of April, the hostilities were very intense. At that point, my husband and I had just purchased a land plot. We were going to build a, a house and we were actually looking forward to arranging some flower, uh, some um, gardening, be gardening beds there to grow uh, some food. But then the war broke out and we couldn't do that because 
still there the, the there were some formalities that we had to close and that is how i came up with this idea to plant stuff on my balcony i actually set up a group on uh, telegram a messenger that we that, that we are using it invited others to join me including our specialists in permaculture who helped us who consulted um us and um who consulted who gave us um um consultation assistance and um this is how it all migrated into the city eventually like i said this was something new for me and so i found every stage to be extremely fascinating all i had was theory and this was the first time i actually tried doing this see i took pictures every day day four uh, you can see my kale showing up day six cucumbers joining uh, day 10 there's more of the sprouts and some microgreens later on as you can see on these pictures so it was a great distraction by the way from all the awful news that we were getting at that time I, I can't say that I was relaxing, but I it definitely helped me find some inner peace. It was about 60 of us in that Telegram chat, I think, and uh, everyone was happy. It was this little, little success that you actually held on to and that helped you through the day. So happiness was about you know the little thing little things this is my basil and when i was watering it i noticed how it 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 would um give me this uh nice uh, smell after i watered it i mean it's just such a tiny plant but it already smelled like basil it was very very um uh, distinct Later on, my husband helped me equip uh, the balcony better for this. Arranged, uh, we arranged uh, some shelves. It was pretty sunny throughout the day, and it was uh, it was it was great to have all this light. But when this when when the summer came, it was actually pretty hot. So I had to control. Uh, the humidity and I had to take care of the ventilation I mean it's it's an apartment it's not um, an outdoor garden so I had to take care of things like that on day 23 I potted my uh, sprouts now I can see my mistakes but anyway the experience was great and if you are afraid to start planting, say, uh, outdoors, you can just, you know, start with a few pots right there at home and you can, well, you can witness this process step by step. And of course, learn as you go learn something about each stage now i've now i know that pots had uh, certain limitations and a, a balcony uh, garden had certain limitations turned out that i i actually planted a lot of stuff and i had to actually later on give some of it away but I had tomatoes, I had cucumbers, I had uh, sweet pepper, celery, cabbages, all kinds of uh, greens, uh, herbs, um, spices, even flowers. I planted lavender for the first time. I'm not going to go through the list. That was just to, to name a few to give you an idea. So it helped me believe in myself. I realized that 
balcony your balcony can actually be the place for you to grow food if you want a fresh salad you can just go and get some vegetables uh, no cucumbers this year um, unfortunately as you can see on the picture permaculture was all uh, was also something that i tried you can see how i mulched my plants and uh, my crops and I even tried making my own fertilizers from nettle, for example, or from the greens that I would, uh, you know, keep in water for a while, for some time and then use that water to make my soil as, as fertile as possible. Now, August was probably the most interesting part because you can see how it was all uh, ripening. And I, by accident, I had, a, I think it is sunberry plant or um, crop. So it was an interesting experience all in all. I'm, I even managed to collect some seeds. I, I still keep uh, actually uh, collecting it. Not everything is, is, uh, has gone dry, but I already have a seed bank for the next season. Now, how did I move to the city garden? Well, it turned out my balcony didn't have enough space, so I had to look for additional funding to replicate and uh, to, say, um, roll out this experience um, on a larger scale. I was also looking for someone to partner up with, someone who was uh, looking for the same opportunities. And this is how I found partners in a in a local university they gave me a 12 by 12 meters uh, a plot of land they even had this uh, small um, pond uh, in the back so the first thing we did was uh, um, did the was the estimate and uh, with that estimate we went looking for investors it took us some time because uh, I had this idea in May and on July 23rd we started the garden uh, most people uh, with whom I discussed this they said that it was too late uh, to plant anything you won't be able to harvest anything because there won't be anything to harvest but we decided to go ahead um, nonetheless because that would give us something uh, one way or another to, to build on next year so I believe that it, it would actually be fun for the students of that university to take some of those raised beds and plant something there and then experiment with it. Also, we were planning to have 20 beds, but we managed to have only 15 of them raised. So the plan was to have people just to come and plant some seeds, but since we were hardly able to put uh, together those 15, we used that day to say have this master class for those willing to try it. And we raised uh, the remaining beds that same day. The same day. It wasn't exactly um, the. It wasn't. Uh, those weren't exactly proper raised beds because I know that, and we knew that we had to put some some branches, some uh, cut grass, and uh, some leaves. We found a producer um, who 
does vermicomposting. And so he gave us some soil to use. So everyone seemed to have enjoyed it. People were very engaged, very invested. Uh, a lot of children uh, came uh, with their parents and uh, it was fun. Plus, this gave people yet another reason to get together as a community, exchange some ideas, share experience. So I think that city gardens are also about developing your community and about connecting people. Like I said, composting is critical to having a garden like this. And this is what we are promoting as uh, an NGO. We are promoting the idea of composting uh, the organic stuff instead of throwing away, throwing it away. So we promote this idea as a city composter. So basically anyone can come and bring, I mean, can bring their waste here and uh, uh, leave it in the composter. You can see that we even uh, uh, put up some visuals about what you do and do not throw away in the composter. Uh, the local canteen uh, also joined uh, this initiative. And they are also bringing their waste, food waste. Well, like I said, people said that we would never make it time-wise, but as you can see, we have uh, here what tomatoes, we have zucchini, we have uh, uh, strawberries. So quite a bit of stuff, I would say. Uh, here you can see uh, what mint, different uh, salads, uh, some flowers. Oh, we even have some uh, people. They they come and help us uh, prepare the beds for winter. For for winter, some of them even start booking these beds for the next year. Especially those who have no summer cottages, who have no other way to plant anything. This is what it looks like today. See, and this is this is our uh, the, the crops that we've harvested. So when you bring your compost, for example, you can at the same time uh, take, take some greens from the beds and uh, bring it back home. If you have any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Well, I should probably uh, pass the mic to Mihailo and then we will get the questions. Greetings, Mihailo. Yes, greetings. I will try sharing my screen myself. Give me a second. Let me know if you can hear me okay and see my screen. Yes, we can see your screen, your slides, and we can hear you. Fantastic. Well, greetings again. Uh, let me present our project, our initiative that started back in 2019 or rather 2020. We are an urban garden project from Ivano-Frankivsk. My name is Mihailo Vaklin. I am, I am head of Zero Waste Ivano-Frankivsk NGO, so we are collecting uh, waste and then send them off uh, for processing. Also, rooftop gardens is what we do. So briefly, a few words about our projects. Uh, creative processing workshop, uh, when, where we produce uh, well, where we work with a fabric, with glass um, and such. We also were open for the local residents to um, come and bring their waste. And then we uh, would take care of the processing. So somehow, uh, 
well, rather, we've been operating on the premise that any challenge is actually an opportunity. So when 2019 uh, coronavirus pandemic uh, broke out, we at first decided to slow down. Well, this was our initial response. And uh, eventually we ca came up with this idea of urban green gardens. We figured that it would be a great way to communicate with nature since we couldn't communicate with other humans, uh, at least not for a while. Then came summer 2020 and we opened, we started out this uh, rooftop project, um, a vertical bed as we call it. This was more of a, an exhibit. We planted uh, some crops here as you can see and uh, the visitors, the children, they were welcome to come and uh, check it out, maybe try something from those beds. And this is how we knew that we should uh, keep moving in this direction. We also had animals come with, or had the people bring their pets. And uh, it was fun. We are not agronomists. We did not have the background of this kind, but... Uh, it was fun and it was it was uh, a fantastic experience and any advice we could get from the people uh, any piece of advice it was always uh, welcome so this was our huge achievement as i see it this vertical bed was actually something we designed and made ourselves you can see our logo you can see that the overall design actually um, facilitates uh, this kind of uh, gardening with temperature wise and otherwise so like I said we decided to keep moving in this direction we took this indoors to get indoors and we set up a space for microgreens and mushrooms uh, we had actually to to um, rooms and two floors this is uh, the crops as you see what we managed to achieve but the pandemic uh, was still uh, ongoing and uh, we weren't really able to sell properly that is why we decided to transform this project into an you know, awareness initiative so anyone could come take whatever they want. And we would also tell them something fun about gardening, about uh, environmental friendly consumption, about uh, waste management. Eventually we started um, all classes for master classes for, for children and youth who uh, were happy to participate and they love it when when the results are quick and with microgreens it takes like 10 days from the seeds to it, the product that you can actually see and touch so it was fun and it was a popular um, initiative and end of 2020 beginning of 2021 we added uh, our composting um, initiative to the project. So like, uh, you know, Ocean's Eleven, we had 11 partners, 11 friends. Uh, those were um, like, um, we also worked together with the catering facilities and all those who could contribute food waste. And then in uh, May, June, 2021, we uh, um, 
invited the children to come and see how we manage our compost, how we use earthworms for that purpose. And we, uh, you can see doubled the size of our bed. It was six in, I think, square meters. So in July and August 2021, we launched an outdoor initiative. It was a weekly uh, initiative, weekly events for children and youth funded by the local um, authorities. We offered free of charge master classes for children and youth, including in foreign languages and in, in drawing uh, and other um, activities. And children seemed to enjoy it because it was, you know, the very downtown area, yet there was a garden with uh, plants and it was fun. This is how we attracted more people. Now stage three, October, 2021 was when we added more beds. I think it was 26 uh, square meters by then. We planted some more crops. You can see the children uh, smiling and that was actually the best reward for us. This is our Facebook page. So you are welcome to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, reach out to us with any questions. We are always happy to share experience. Uh, we don't have that much of experience, but we're happy to tell you what we know and maybe learn something from you. So our plans for 2023, 2024, initially we planned uh, to, um, have this local center reconstructed. This is actually a, one of the local plants that we were planning to reconstruct. This was the design um, made by one of our students um, of the local university. And we were planning to have a rooftop garden of 600 square meters. And it was supposed to be some op an open space facility for anyone who wanted to have their own uh, little little garden, their own um, um, garden in bed uh, in the city. And on the on the first floor, there's going to be a food court area. They're going to collect their food waste, then compost that waste, and grow more food uh, in that uh, rooftop garden. This is how we visualize it, but unfortunately, another challenge, this time it was the war. It is too soon to tell um, what's gonna come out of it, but we're hopeful, we keep on working. I'm currently based in Berlin. I'm, I've joined a number of uh, local projects, again, learning more about this kind of gardening, city gardens, and other uh, waste management projects. And we believe that come next year, come next spring, we will be able to do our 600 meter gardening um, on that rooftop. This is our team. And these are my details. Feel free to hit me up on the social media, uh, on the phone. Would be happy to chat with you. Thank you so much. And now I suggest uh, that I continue facilitation from now on to make it easier for everyone. Sure, thanks. Katerina, people uh, say here that they are uh, have, they are really impressed by your sage uh, bed. Uh, it's it's really smart of you to to raise it uh, to prevent frosting. The question to you is about pollination uh, for balcony gardens. D did you did you choose 
specifically the um, flowering uh, plants to attract pollinators. Yeah, uh, what, what we chose, what I chose was self-pollinating uh, plants. Uh, Ivan, Ivan, Belousov, uh, Ivan Belousov is distributing these wonderful seeds of such plants. And additionally, I, uh, I, I used the brush to pollinate more. Additionally, uh, I opened the windows on my balcony to have more bees. Uh, that's where, where I live is second floor. Uh, so yeah, I had enough pollination. I don't know what people do if they live on the ninth or 10th floor. If you are closer to the park, the park to a park, the problem is not that bad, of course. Next question. I don't know who the who it is put to. Do you have any interest for intergenerational um, engagement and uh, knowledge exchange? Because uh, older generations are more um, are more uh, knowledgeable about traditional approaches, whereas the new generations are more knowledgeable about innovations in uh, agriculture, city, uh, urban agriculture, and technologies. If I may, I'd uh, take this question. We have been around for over six years. And we see all generations in our project uh, from uh, primary school age children to elderly people. They communicate uh, very well. Uh, elderly people are quite open to new technologies and generations. I, th I think this is a great experience and uh, yeah, it works very well. No problems uh, in terms of intergeneration exchange. Uh, I'd like to add several words. We mostly target a specific audience, uh, namely youth and children. We want to have children and youth invest their energy into educating uh, older generations. On the other hand, uh, we sometimes uh, are reached out by uh, reached out to by um, uh, elderly people who are willing to share their knowledge, and we are uh, quite open to such cooperation. So, in in such case, uh, these older people uh, can become can can play a role of experts, and the youth can learn from them. So, we we don't see any problem uh, here. Lydia, question from Lydia. A wonderful uh, project. And Beatrice is saying here that uh, this was a great example of uh, how great ideas can uh, improve the conditions of society and environment. M maybe someone has question questions to ask right now. Let me check here again. If you want, you can unmute yourself and speak, or you can use chat uh, for a question. Can I add one more thing? I forgot to say it. Several days ago, we won a grant from Sadi Paramohe or Gardens of Victory. Uh, we are going to use this grant for uh, establishing drip. Um, uh, system and uh, for uh, other uh, drip irrigation and other uh, things like water shedding um, to, to make it more comprehensive. Any other questions for our presenters? So far, nothing. Okay. I uh, thank all our speakers and Katerina for organization of this part. Ah, I can see Marjorie raising her hand. Please go ahead. 
Yes, thank you. Um, I was um, really excited to hear about all of the projects you have been involved in and wanted to know what kind of support you might uh, wish for uh, from the international community, especially uh, volunteers who are humanitarian workers in uh, Ukraine. And it's okay if you don't have any answer, but if you did, it would give us some direction. Probably I would start by saying that we were uh, working like this. Our first prototype, our first model was realized on our own money then we engaged uh, some donors uh, like businesses were ready to support us what kind of resources we would like to get from international communities mostly knowledge uh, know-how I know that in Germany there are a lot of experienced um, projects that, that know a lot about uh, what we are doing and we are quite new in that um, maybe also money for funding for seeds and for equipment uh, we, we we are otherwise uh, well off and we are here to continue developing the initiative I am really grateful for this question uh, and if it's possible, I would uh, ask the following. We are going to establish this greenhouse with uh, geothermal um, heating. We would also like to purchase solar panels so that during two uh, darkest and coldest winter months, we could have our greenhouse uh, up and running. Uh, that would also be great for us. If it's possible, we would take mini station or money for purchasing it, uh, like for solar panels, if it's possible. Thank you. Uh, what I would like to say is um, we are mostly interested in uh, knowledge exchange. We would like to have uh, foreign experts uh, coming to us, sharing their knowledge, uh, communicate with us, with our students, with the city dwellers in our community, and to yeah, we we are also open for for sharing what we know and can do. Thank you very much.